They're new partners of ours, and I know a lot of you guys are already familiar with the site. If you're not, I uh, highly recommend uh, getting on there, checking out the site, becoming a member, uh, and checking out the content that they have on there. They got some unbelievable stuff uh, from coaches around the world, and they're going to be a great resource uh, going forward for us. Um, you know, we're looking already and talking already about how Aaron and, and his site can help us grow in this this form here, the things that we're doing here, and take some of his connections and things he's doing with his conference in Ann Arbor and implementing a model like that for us here. And uh, I think that we're at the very infancy stages of this, um, but I think it's going to be a great partnership for us. And uh, Aaron, Aaron's here to share a little bit about the partnership, about their site, and uh, just uh, I think, like I said, it's going to be a great thing going forward for our, our coaches. So Aaron, thanks for being here. We really appreciate it. Uh, appreciate it, Aaron. Thank you. Yep. I'm going to try and breeze through this because I, I know like when I come to this stuff, um, like I'd rather be in your shoes and, and soak it up. I thought uh, Nick's presentation there was fantastic. And, uh, and I know you want to, you know, get to the stuff that's going to help you impact your, your programs, impact your players. So we'll try and breeze through this. But as Aaron said, just want to give a brief introduction to, to what we do at the coaches site. We have a new uh, platform that just launched this past Tuesday, which we're really excited about. So I want to introduce you to that. Um, but just as we get going, just a little bit about me. Um, so, uh, husband, father to two boys, sports nut. Um, the only team that I'm kind of emotionally connected to is the University of Alabama. It's a big reason why we started the coaches side. I was coaching at the University of BC, uh, gosh, in, in, in 2010, and I was staying late one night at the office, was probably looking up some drills on YouTube, and I get surfaced ad. And it's an ad for this DVD called Nick Saban game changer and it was on the Alabama Crimson Tide I didn't I hadn't watched the game of college football in my life at that point and uh, it was a DVD and how he came to Alabama and built the first national championship team and so just on a whim I ordered it forgot about it like six weeks later I get this package from Birmingham Alabama I popped this DVD in and uh, it was awesome I took so much away from that and a light bulb went on I said you know like it wasn't a coaching course it wasn't a coaching clinic but it was entertaining and connect the dots, say, man, if we could make coach education entertaining, something that you don't have to do, you're not checking a box, but you wanna do it, you wanna invest in yourself, that could be really powerful. And that DVD, I still have it. It has literally been shipped. I bet you it's been half the coaching offices in the National Hockey League back and forth. I've lost it for a couple of years at a time, uh, but it's, it's safely back in my office at home now. It was a big inspiration for starting the coaches site. Um, as a coach, uh, I coached Junior A, Junior B, uh, University Hockey, um, Coach Major Midget, which would kind of be our equivalent to high school hockey in, in British Columbia, where I'm from, Coach Pee Wee Hockey. Uh, now I'm proudly a U7 coach with my little guys team. Um, and uh, you know, beyond that, I had the opportunity when I left UBC for six years, uh, I was the Vancouver Canucks ambassador in China. I think I did 21 trips overseas in a six year period working with developing grassroots hockey. Unbelievable experience working with you know kids and coaches where there's a language barrier and it just really refines your skill set. I think in, in recognizing um, the impact you can have as coaches um, and, and, and the importance of having a really diverse toolbox and a bag of tricks at your disposal. And then um, uh, I was also a hockey director at the North Shore Winter Club. So the North Shore Winter Club is a private club in North Vancouver, BC. Uh, Connor Bedard came up there, uh, Macklin Celebrini, uh, will likely be the first overall pick in this year's draft, came up there. And there, you know, there was a kind of a lot of prestige with that, but in 2020, um, my wife, we were on a walk, our little guy had just been born, she's like, she's like, I think you should quit your job. And I was like, like what are you talking about? We just had like a pandemic, I'm like, I quit my job. She's like, you're miserable. You love hockey, but she's like, it's, you're losing it. It's just sucking it out of you. And she was right because in that environment, and this is why I have so much admiration for the job that everybody here does, because it's a, you're doing this because it's about relationships. I mean, I think, you know, Sean's story yesterday, but you know, the, your daughter's team and how you taught those kids to skate, you're connected to that. And we were at a private club and it was about status. It was about status. It wasn't about developing the kids. It was just about, can our kid have the three A's on their track suit versus the single A? And so at that point, I said, you know what, we're gonna jump jump in and, and uh, um, see what we can do with this coach's site thing. So that's what we did. Um, 
founded the Coach Society in 2011. At that time, it was a tiny little conference in Vancouver at a hotel ballroom. Uh, I wasn't qualified to organize a 10 year old's birthday party at, at the time, so I, I got so much admiration for what Aaron's doing, because I know Aaron, probably what happened is, there was probably a Zoom meeting like a year ago, and they said, who wants to put their hand up and run the clinic? And uh, it's probably crickets, and finally he put his hand up, and this is a ton of work. So. And I'm looking for someone to raise their hand for Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you know, like, and I and I feel really lucky. Like my wife, when we, you know, if we're at a you know a dinner party or something, and somebody asks what I do for a living, her response is, "He's a car guy who got to open a garage." Like I, I love this stuff. I feel so fortunate that we get to do it. I know we've talked to lots of coaches that say they, you know, and it's it's uh, we're really proud. They they watch our videos. They're into it. I'm the same way. Like I love coming and watching these presentations. I learn so much, and uh, and really geek out on this stuff. So. Um, just to kick things off, this is a video. Nobody's seen this yet other than um, you know our staff. So this commercial is gonna come out uh, this week, right, Matt? Yeah. Okay, this week. Um, and uh, you guys are the first to see it. So this is kind of our introducing our new platform and our new brand. <laughs> They push us to new heights. They're there for us when we stumble. They teach us how to compete. And they show us how it's possible for a team to be greater than the sum of its parts. Coaches are a special breed. The best care about the person first and the athlete second. They let us know that we're respected, valued, and find a way to bring out our best. And they always have our backs. A great coach is a teacher, a leader, and a friend, all rolled into one. I know, I was very fortunate in my career to play for some truly great coaches. The Coaches Site connects a global community of coaches who aspire to innovate and provide their athletes a world-class development opportunity. They offer insights into all aspects of coaching, from the X's and O's, to individual skill development, to how to best connect with and lead today's athlete. The Coaches Site allows coaches of all levels to create and share content and access their own coaching library 24-7 on any device. Start connecting and collaborating with coaches from around the world today at thecoachessite.com. Uh, that, that we have with the Minnesota Hockey Coaches Association. Um, we've had a partnership with Minnesota Hockey for several years now. Um, and, you know, a big thing about what, what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm just trying to look for people, coaches, that have great ideas and say, how can we take those ideas and broadcast them to a broad um, audience? And, you know, Mike Snee, who presented yesterday, Mike and I are really good friends. We talk Minnesota Hockey, you know, for hours at a time and you know Mike points out that you know one of the benefits of hockey in Minnesota is you know obviously the high school system it's the fact that I, I forget the exact numbers but it's like 98% of the rinks are community owned so it's accessible to kids the ice is cheap um, the game's a lot more affordable here and I, and I get all that but my response to Mike is it's like you can you can have all that in place anywhere in the world you still need people that know how to step on the ice and develop players like just because you give kids lots of ice doesn't mean you're going to get the results that minnesota has in terms of the amount of division one players the amount of nhl players and just for anybody that's keeping score like the data behind the player development of minnesota it's not even close to anywhere else in north america it's it's unbelievable and what we see happening is that Everybody else in North America is running away from this type of a, a model, right? And so my response to Mike is, is like the biggest difference that I can observe in Minnesota is that coaches everywhere else are contractors, right? Like the association brings in the super duper coach to coach the peewee team so they can hopefully get some wins. They don't really care how they do it. They just care that they win so the parents shut up. They're contractors. You guys are craftsmen. You guys are here because you're, you know, your dad coached you because you grew up in your community, because you went to the high school, you're now coaching and you take so much pride. You've seen these kids come up through the minor hockey system. And I know that there's not a direct line, okay, that we can attach to that in player development, but I can see it, I can feel it. And so a big reason why we're really excited about this partnership is hopefully 
we can draw out a little bit about what's going on here and we can share that because I think it is really going to benefit our game as a whole because we got to get more back to this. And um, so as part of our partnership, we're going to be sponsoring the uh, Coach of the Year Awards. Um, so we'll be back at the uh, state championship, which I'm super excited to take him for the first time. And, and the, uh, the, the recipients of those awards will receive uh, free tickets uh, to come out and join us in Ann Arbor at our, at our live conference at the University of Michigan. So just like Cool Harvey, so really simple. The Coaches Society provides the platforms for hockey's uh, top coaches, leaders, and performance experts uh, to share their experience with the global coaching community. Um, and a little bit about our presenters. So our content is delivered by the best and brightest minds in the game. Um, and we're really proud of that. Uh, from NHL veterans to the next wave of coaching talent, TCS provides you a diverse roster of presenters. And, you know, we get asked all the time, like, how do you get your coaches to share? Um, you know, because these talk, they're open books. And I'm like, man, it's not because we give them like a truth serum. Like they're just motivated to do it. Like I see what Sean did yesterday, that presentation, which was awesome for him to do that in a group of his peers. Um, that means something, right? Like, and that's how we all get better. But the top coaches in the game, that's what we've learned to appreciate. I think their mindset is like, you can go on YouTube and you can see Gordon Ramsay make a souffle, but just cause you watch that, it doesn't make you a Michelin star chef. Like there's a lot of nuance and context to coaching. It's an art form. Um, but the way that we all get better is we got to, we got to share information. So we're really proud about the coaches that we get to work with on a daily basis. Um, little snapshot on our community. So right now, um, on the coaches site, we've got about 15% of the global hockey coaching population, uh, representing 21 countries. Um, in season, 92% of our audience are on the website on a weekly basis. Over 8,000 coaches uh, participate through group programs, primarily through their minor hockey associations. So their minor hockey association purchases a group program of dis uh, discounted tickets. Everybody gets to be involved. And uh, we, we ran a, we did a survey with our, uh, with our audience last year and 77% um, responded that they take learnings from the coaches site and implement it with their teams on a weekly basis, which was really cool. Um, and we cover all aspects of coaching. So uh, whether it's the on ice instruction, you know, skill progressions, um, tactics, system analysis, team leadership, we do this through a variety of like, whether it's webinars, videos from our conferences, we have podcasts, we do a number of virtual events throughout the year. So we provide a full suite of coaching content that you can access 24 seven. And um, we've really been focused in the past two years on making sure that we have a di we had a diverse uh, cross section of kind of like the hockey population. So whether it's initiation skills, so um, we've got you know program that we developed with Glenn Carnegie, uh, for example, who was the skills coach for the Vancouver Canucks for 13 years. His daughter was was getting into her initiation years. He recognized that there was maybe an opportunity to support coaches, mostly volunteer parents. So we created an initiation skill series that's literally plug and play an entire season for three years. Take, your, uh, take kids through that program. Um, you know, we do a program where in February, it's called the Global Skills Series. So we invite skills coaches to apply. We picked the top 10 last year. We had 174 applications. It's literally the best of the best and those coaches provide. We ask them to pick a skill and teach the progressions on how they would teach that skill. Um, and then again, there's around organizational leadership, staff development leadership. We try and cover all those boxes and then um, again we're really lucky we work with a lot of the top development programs around the world so whether it's federations like the Finnish Federation hockey Germany hockey Norway we work with a lot of governing bodies like Minnesota hockey uh, Michigan amateur uh, the Ontario minor hockey association hockey Alberta uh, we work with a lot of junior leagues like the USHL BCHL AJHL and then we're really, really proud that we work with um, a lot of coaches associations. So currently we work with the Michigan High School Coaches Association, Wisconsin High School Coaches Association, um, and now the Minnesota Coaches Association. And we've been really proud about some of the work we've done and you know, bringing in speakers for their events. And I think what we really pride ourselves on is like our, our phone's always on. So we'll get, you know, whether it's an individual coach from a program that says, hey, I'm looking for this type of resource or hey, you know, uh, next weekend the Michigan, uh, they're doing a virtual clinic like this. So we've set them up with a couple of presenters 
Um, so just for anybody here, like if you got something that we can pitch in with, um, we'd love to hear from you. Um, so what's really cool is now, like I said, we've got a new platform that's come out and this platform has been informed by a lot of conversations with coaches to say, what are your pain points? How could we, if we had a magic wand, how could we make the coaches say, uh, a better tool for you. And the feedback that we received is that coaches wanted to be able to connect with each other. They wanted to be able to share and exchange content. And they wanted to be, wanted to be able to communicate uh, and collaborate on that content. So we listen and for two and a half years we've been building um, this new platform. So a couple of features and functionality. Um, so like, I'll give you an example. So Nick uh, just did his, uh, his presentation here and there's all those practice clips. Raise your hand if you want to get a hand, get a get those practice clips in your hands. Everybody, right? So here's the problem though. So for Nick to do that, he's probably got those on a hard drive, or he's got them say in a Dropbox. He's got to download one clip, and then he's got to email it to you. But shit, if you don't have Dropbox, then you've got to download it, and it's just a really clunky user experience. So now what's going to happen on the coaches' side is for all the coaches, and I'm sure. A lot of you probably have a lot of NHL clips, your own team's clips. You can upload all that media into our platform for free. There's no hosting fees, okay? And then you can organize it in your own personal library because probably what happens is you don't want to send one clip to a coach. You're probably going to say, here's a clip of the University of Wisconsin's four check. Here's a couple drills I've taken from you know my practices, other teams' practices on how we teach it and then here's my team doing it you know correctly and you're probably going to have a sequence of drills that you want to package together so you can again for free you can upload all that content and you can put it in your own uh, personal coaching library and it's up to you if you want to keep that private if you want to make that available to the coaches on your staff or if you want to publish it and make it available for coaches system-wide um, you're going to have the opportunity to connect with coaches. So every coach gets a profile. This is going to be similar to LinkedIn. This is going to be your hockey coaching CV. Okay. And what's cool is you can see, you know, wh what country the coaches are from, where they coach. You can easily go and you can follow coaches with one click. You can start conversations with them. Um, and this might be coaches that are within this room because you all coach high school hockey, but it might be a coach who's co uh, content um, that you really enjoy from Sweden. And you can connect with them and, and uh, see what they're up to. Um, again, it's really easy to publish, share all types of coaching content, and you get to collaborate on everything from practice plans to seasonal plans to skill development. So I know you guys are just starting your season. Like how many of you have a presentation that you're putting together, say on the power play for your teams that you're gonna show them, right? So we've built a tool. So now as you t you've got all that, you know, all your content lives on your profile. So now when you go put that presentation together, we have a, a tool that you can use to create courses, uh, to create presentations. You can easily drag and drop all your content in there. And then as you go through your coaching career, all those presentations are gonna live on the site. You can share them with other coaches, you can tweak them, you can get the other coaches on your staff to collaborate on them. And that's just, again, this is just where all your coaching content is gonna live. And then from a collaboration perspective, this is why we're really excited about Minnesota. So we're working with Minnesota Hockey right now. Um, to create what we call a locker. So every coach and every organization is gonna have a locker. And within that locker, there's clipboard. So a clipboard could be anything. It could be uh, developing defensemen. And so this is gonna be content that you upload yourself, that other coaches uh, in your organizations share with the group. This could be content if you follow like Daniel Broberg uh, over in Sweden, who's a really renowned skills coach. If he posts a video, you can grab that, put that into your locker curate it yourself um, and so what is going to happen is you can imagine okay if we talk about the Minnesota model okay we want to we want to bottle that up okay and we want to take everybody's best ideas whether you're a volunteer squirt coach whether you're the top high school coach in the in the state we want to take everybody's best ideas and make those available for everybody so you can imagine if everybody in this room shared one thing shared one thing and made that available to the Minnesota Hockey Locker so that every coach in Minnesota could get access to that. How much better is the programming gonna be in Minnesota in one year? It's gonna be instantaneous, right? And so an example of that, and this is really the motivation for why we did this, I coach my little guys U7 program, 
and I'm really lucky. So one of our other coaches, her name's Katie Jones. Katie Jones is like, you know, the best possible U7 coach you can find. She played Division One hockey, and she's a kindergarten teacher, right? <laughs> like, gold. And so last week, this is a true story. So last weekend, you know, I show up at the rink at 7 a.m. I've got my practice plan. I'm sitting with the other parents. You know, we're trying to tie skates, get our, our little ones ready to go for practice. And I, I said, I said, so at the start of practice, we're going to play, you know, a game of tag. And she's like, have you ever played cops and robbers? Anybody here played cops and robbers before? A couple. Okay. I hadn't played cops and robbers before. So for anybody that's not listening, it's like, and if you get tagged, you got to go stand in the net. That's the jail. And then the other kid's got to tag you so you can get out of jail. She's, I said, Katie, you're up. You're going to run the, the first drill in practice. We run cops and robbers, mm -hmm. and, and the kids love it. And so we look at that, and I'm like, every coach in the world that coaches U7 or learn to play hockey should have cops and robbers in their toolkit. So what we look at, and we say, okay, well, how long is it going to take that idea to spread? Like, how long would it take that idea to spread in the state of Minnesota? Well, it probably takes years. Right, because we've got to get enough coaches to come to these events to talk to each other, probably draw it out on a whiteboard. Okay, we're going to put it in the hands of every learn to play coach by lunchtime tomorrow. They're going to have access to it. So every time somebody has a great idea, and everybody here has something to share that's going to make everybody better, we want to make that information available for everybody and have it at their fingertips as quickly as possible. Um, uh, Aaron mentioned our conference. So again, we started a, a, a conference in a room very similar to this back in 2011 in Vancouver. Um, we, we eventually moved it to Toronto because, of course, Toronto is the center of the hockey universe. Uh, but it wasn't, we were missing that personal connection. Like the, the stuff that you guys all did after curfew last night, that's what makes these events really special, right? We were missing that because Toronto is a big place. So we said, you know what, when COVID hit, we had to cancel our event and then we said, you know what, we're going to pause and we want to find a place to put it. And we want a place where, you know, people can be together for the full three days. Uh, so we moved it to the University of Michigan. It's obviously really central geographically, but it's a great spot. Um, you can come and uh, you can check in your hotel. Everything's walkable. At that time of year, you can carry a beer from, you know, across the street if you want to, which is kind of fun. So this is just a bit of a snapshot of it. So last year we had uh, 500 coaches uh, from 14 countries attend. Um, so we do it in a big auditorium. It's kind of a cool setup. Um, um, we use the, the, uh, the university's uh, ice facility, so there's both uh, on stage and uh, on ice presentations. We do workshops, uh, breakouts, all kinds of stuff for the weekend. Um, I think there's something to be said for doing it in person. I think everybody can appreciate that's here. Uh, this is the rooftop of the Cirque Bar in downtown Ann Arbor. So uh, the first night we rent that out for, the, for everybody. Uh, Huddle comes in, they do a big beer tent on one of the nights. There's like live music and stuff. So we really want to make sure, like this is kind of my barometer personally. Um, and what I'm really proud of, we want to make sure that every coach that leaves that event uh, and we see it, they're so juiced up to get back with their teams uh, in September, October when their season starts. And, and we think we do a pretty good job of accomplishing that. And again, we try and cover um, um, all facets of the game. And I think one thing that, that we do that's maybe different because, you know, we're kind of like Switzerland in the hockey world. Um, you know, we don't, we don't have a, a country's flag that we represent. We, rep we like to think we represent everybody. You know, we've got, you know, the best coaches in the world on stage that, you know, we see on TV. Um, but then we have other coaches that you've never heard of that we generally, just through conversation, we'll be talking to some, they're like, you gotta get this person um, on stage because they really know what they're talking about and we give them those opportunities. And, and so we're always looking for kind of the best and brightest and that could be high school coaches, it could be coaches in different parts of the world. Um, last year when we first came back, so in 2022, we had four of our presenters that got their first NHL gigs um, following the event and every one of their interviews, I got a text from them and said, holy shit, my presentation at TCS Live was brought up in the interview, and that was that was really really cool. So um, I say that if anybody here has an idea of something you're passionate about, um, we're kind of like TED Talks for hockey. Um, shoot me an email; I'd love to hear from you. Um, if there's something that can offer the community, we're all in. Um, and this is just a quick video. This is uh, from last year. We we haven't announced the dates, but we've just secured them. It's June 20th and 22nd of 
next year at the University of Michigan. You guys being here and you guys being here today is so important because you're adding to what makes our players better. The game has evolved, so I think that as coaches need to evolve as well. And developing a player, it's about the environment that's created for them to be successful. And when you're talking to your team and you're looking at how you can generate more off the rush, focus on these two areas, your D-zone exits and then your quick hit transition. I don't want our players to think, you cannot make mistakes. No, no. You cannot wait. That's what you cannot do. You're going and mistake will happen. I'm an individual as a female and I can bring that to the game. And you look at the top teams around the league, they do the same thing over and over and over again and do it extremely well. The key is getting off the hip, working your cut back, utilizing your edges so that when I blow the whistle, you can drive the net. The old school three-man cycles that we learned in white squirt peewee, it's extinct. Getting to become familiar with people from all over the world, share the experiences and conversations of struggles that other people have, benefits that other people have. The best coaches are the best thieves, so it's nice to be able to have a platform where you can literally steal from one another and borrow from one another. What you learned five years ago isn't what they're teaching today, and so it's fun to, to see the evolution of that. What the coaches site has done was not just talk about hockey. They really done a great job developing the mental part of the game, the physical part of the game, a lot of the intangibles that maybe some coaches clinics only cover X's and O's and this really has covered much more than just you know, the on ice product. Uh, it's a lot of fucking fun, let me tell you, it's awesome. <laughs> um, so just a little partnership summary. Um, so again, we're really proud, so we're going to sponsor for the, uh, the next couple years and, and, and in our eyes we want to do it for the next 20 years, uh, the MHCA uh, TCS Coach of the Year Award. Uh, winners are gonna receive tickets to TCS Live. Uh, for everybody that is a part um, of the association, we're gonna send a, a, a coupon code in the next two weeks, so you're gonna get 50% off an annual membership, which works out to $6.25 a month. Um, and we'll give everybody a $200 discount on tickets to TCS Live, so it's $3.99 versus uh, versus 599 and again um, if there's any questions again if there's any if you want to learn more about our program there's also um, the QR code here I know some of the coaches have asked that you know you're involved in your local minor hockey associations as well that's predominantly most of the people on the platform come in through their association or their league um, so if you want to learn more about that you can scan the QR code or go talk to myself or Matt in the back of the room before you leave today we'd love to chat with you about that um, and again, just really excited to be here, be a part of the group here, and really uh, think what you guys have going on is pretty cool. So thank you very much. Guys. So you can you get an idea there of why I think it's a, a great partnership here. And like I said, we're in the infancy of it, but I think there's some awesome things that are gonna come from it. So Aaron, thanks for being here. Really appreciate it, man. All right, next up we got Sean Sunquist. Sean, another partner.